Hey guys, Sarah here from Recovering Book Corridor, and today it is that time of the month when I bring you a shelf spotlight. And we are going to do one of the unread shelves this month. We are going to do this beautiful shelf right here. So this has a mix of books on it. There's quite a few different type of genres on here. So first of all, for the things that are on my shelf, my little tchotchke things, um, start with, so I have this, um, this is the Beatitudes and this was my grandmother's and I got that when she passed away. Then we have the beautiful mm -hmm. landscapes of Anne of Green Gables. This was a gift from my husband for my 40th birthday that just passed. Then I have um, this crocheted cross that my great grandmother crocheted. I have this mug. It's a prayer, changes everything. It has a little top. Isn't that pretty? I love this mug. Um, and on the top it says, pray without ceasing. Let's see, and then it has some of the cards in there from my game. And then we have the Weasleys. The Weasleys clock lives there as well. Okay. So those are our little tchotchke items. All right, now moving on to the books. Um, we'll start from the far side and move our way over. Christ the Lord, The Road to Kana, a novel by M. Rice. The first one, there's two books. The first book was turned into a movie and that was Christ the Lord out of Egypt. That one was turned into the movie. Um, really enjoyed that one. I never ended up reading the second one and it has been a long time since I read that first one. So I do need to read this. This is like an old library copy that I think I should be able to take this off. I would like to be able to take that off. I don't like how that looks. Okay, then I have the Dead Sea Scrolls. New translation. Comprehensive translation of the controversial ancient scrolls with material never before published or translated, including the most recently released texts. The Book of God by Walter Wangarian Jr. And this is takes the, the Bible and turns it into a novelization, which I think is very interesting. And I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't know when I'll read it though, because every year I read a different translation of the Bible. And what I'll probably do is one year I will do this instead of the Bible. I don't know. Looks like it takes about 31 weeks to read through it. If I read through it as it is. So well, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Well, we shall see. We have Jesus for President by Shane Claiborne and Chris Hall. My sister-in-law sent me this for um, right around Christmas time. And she said this is one of her favorites. Actually, one of the, I think it was right around the election. And we had had a pretty political conversation. And she couldn't believe I hadn't read this. So she sent me this. All right. Then we have... White Rage by Carol Anderson, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide. Grit by Angela Duckworth, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. It was the book that started a worldwide conversation, and this must-read book about anyone striving to succeed, pioneering psychologist Angela Duckworth shows parents, students, educators, athletes, and business people, both seasoned and new, that the secret to outstanding achievement is not talent, but a special blend of passion and persistence she calls grit. Okay, then we have Other People's Children, Cultural Conflict in the Classroom by Lisa Delpit, An American Marriage by Terry Jones. Um, I have not read any Terry Jones yet, but I do have two of her books. The other one is not over here, somewhere else. Um, I know this has been talked about all over on Booktube. It says, Haunting, beautifully written, a captivating love story that is also a clear-eyed look at the effects of injustice in contemporary American life. Tyere Jones' novel gorgeously chronicles three people who are bound together and separated by forces beyond their control. I just know that the people I heard talking about it have definitely made the sound very interesting and like a must read. Okay, then we have Thorn in My Heart by Liz Curtis Higgs. I really need to take this sticker off because it's covering up her face. It makes me sad. Uh, this is Christian fiction and 
And it says, in the autumn of 1788, amid the moors and glens of the Scottish lowlands, two brothers fight to claim one father's blessing, two sisters long to claim one man's heart. And I am a sucker for all things Scottish, period. <laughs> Especially like old school Scotland. <laughs> Okay, then we have Rachel and Leah by Orson Scott Card, and this is the last book in the Women of Genesis series, and this one is obviously about Rachel and Leah. I already read the other two. Okay, then we have Untamed by Glennon Doyle, and this was a Christmas gift from my sister-in-law. It says, Untamed will liberate women emotionally, spiritually, and physically. I believe Glennon was born to write this book. Just this way, at just this moment in history, it is phenomenal. This is how you find yourself. There is a voice of longing inside to be each of us. We strive, so, stri <sighs> we strive so mightily to be good. Good partners, daughters, mothers, employees, and friends. We hope all this striving will make us feel alive. Instead, it leaves us feeling weary, stuck, overwhelmed, and underwhelmed. We look at our lives and wonder, wasn't it all supposed to be more beautiful than this? We quickly silence that question, telling ourselves to be grateful, hiding our discontent even from ourselves. Sounds like a book I need to read right now. Okay, then I have, uh, this is a series. These are books two, three, and four in the series. I just read book one two, I think it was two months ago. Um, it's the Hawthorne House series. And the first book I loved so very much that I chose it to be the book club book for um the book club I run with my friend Ruth uh which we will have in June I'm so excited for other people to read it with me they are just they are excellent um these are Christian fiction that are like Regency romances and they are funny I don't want to put it down just really really great story love them so much so the next three and I don't know what order these go in but an elegant facade an inconvenient beauty and an uncommon courtship and I can't wait to read those ones all right then we have the color purple by Alice Walker classic I've never read after hearing April over at Getting Hooked Up With It talk about it, I decided I needed to read it. And I lucked out one day and I found this at Ollie's for like $1.99. Okay, then we have um, David by Charles Swindoll. And this is from the Great Lives from God's Word series. And this is book number one. The rest of these are actually up here. It doesn't sit with it because this is this... Uh, the large print edition, which I hate and does not match the rest of the editions. Again, this is what happens on Book Outlet sometimes. It's not clearly marked as large print and then I buy it and and then not only that, this is how it came to. It was not advertised as damaged. <sighs> Deep breath. Anyway. So it lives separate from its brothers and sisters down on the shelf. Then we have In an Instant by Suzanne Redfern, and this was actually a novel that I got from the um, book exchange, I think it was this year, the Reddit Secret Santa book exchange for this year. And this one says, one moment, 11 lives altered, and a truth only she can see. All right. Then we have Necessarily, Necessary Lies by Diane Chamberlain and Krista over at um, Books and Jams, and Kim, over at Kim, what is Kim's channel called? I'll link it down below, um, but Kim, and gosh, so many other people. I hear so many people talk about Diane Chamberlain. So I have this, and I also have, I think it's called The Secret Daughter, somewhere here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in reading Diane Chamberlain. That sometimes the best intentions expose the darkest secrets. It is 1960 in North Carolina, and the lives of Ivy Hart and Jane Forrester couldn't be more different. 15 year old Ivy lives with her family as tenants on a small tobacco farm, but when her parents die, Ivy is left to care for her grandmother, older sister, and nephew. As she struggles with her grandmother's aging, her sister's mental illness, and her own epilepsy, she realizes they might need more than she can give. 
then we have the X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And I believe this is like a hate to love. Um, a hate to love story that it has this these two people on a radio show pretending to be exes and answering questions and things like that. It just, it sounds, it sounded really good. And um, I had heard Amy talk about this one at, I think my channel, Amy reads a lot, I'll double check. Everybody I talk about today, I will link down in the description box. I think got The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. And it says, The Friend Zone is a beautiful tale of learning to accept the love you deserve. A zippy, instantly recognizable voice and fresh, funny characters. Then this is a gift from my husband. And that is Westworld and Philosophy. And these are a bunch of philosophy essays about the show Westworld, which is one of our favorites. All right, moving on to this pile over here. The House on Vesper Sands by Perrick O'Donnell. He saw her once more as he was hauled up, the sense almost gone from things. He saw it, or thought he did, the brightness of her. The brightness of her and then the dark. London, 1893. I believe that's going to be very atmospheric read and I'm all for it. Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. Bought this after seeing April talk about it also. And um, this was also one of our options for our book club over on Krista's Discord channel for Books and Jams. And it didn't win, but they still did a group read. There was just no way I could fit it into my TBR stack that month, though. But this is kind of, from what I understand, plays out like a legal, like a legal drama. Um, there's like miraculous healings and things like that. It just sounded really, really interesting. And then we get into a bunch of book of the months. <laughs> and we've got People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Emily Henry's latest. She wrote um, Beach Read, which I adored and was so funny. And I'm hoping that this is just as good as that was. And Too Good to Be True by Corolla Lovering. One love story, two marriages, three versions of the truth. My favorite kind of book. One of my, I shouldn't say my favorite kind. One of my favorite kinds of book. Uh, the Mystery of Miss Christie, Mrs. Christie by Marie Benedict. And this is a fictionalized guess as to what happened during the time that Agatha Christie went missing. Because in real life, she did go missing for a period of time. Then we have, let's see, oh, four more. Sometimes this is such an awkward angle. And there's my big head. Move over a little bit. Okay. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And oh, such a pretty, pretty cover. And I believe this is about an apothecary who provides poisons <laughs> to get rid of problematic people in the lives of women back in London a long time ago. And then fast forward to the present and they find this book about these tales and I think it sounds intriguing. Then we have Outlawed by Anna North and this is like a gender bent law blessed story. Um, in the year of our Lord 1894 I became an outlaw. The day of her wedding, 17-year-old Ada's life looks good. She loves her husband and she loves working as an apprentice to her mother, a respected midwife. But after a year of marriage and no pregnancy in a town where barren women are routinely hanged as witches, her survival depends on leaving behind everything she knows. She joins up with the notorious hole-in-the-wall gang, a band of outlaws led by a preacher turned robber known to all as the Kid. Charismatic, grandiose, and mercurial, the Kid is determined to create a safe haven for outcast women. But to make this dream a reality, the gang hatches a treacherous plan that may get them all killed. Okay, I think it sounds fun. Okay, Black Buck, a novel by Matteo Ascarapore. There's nothing like a black salesman on a mission. It says, for fans of Sorry to Bother You and The Wolf of Wall Street, 
a blazing satirical debut novel about a young man given a shot at stardom as a lone black salesman at a mysterious cult-like and wildly successful startup where nothing is as it seems. Then the last one on our shelf, The Mothers by Brooke Bennett. I absolutely loved The Vanishing Half and decided I needed to read more from Brooke Bennett. So when I saw this could be done as an add-on for Book of the Month, I of course added it on and can't wait to read some more from her. Says, an, uh, let's see. The Mothers is a book about community and ambition, love and friendship, living up to expectation in contemporary Black America. And this was her debut. All right, so that is my unread shelf. <laughs> what do you guys think? Have you read any of these? I would love to hear what you think about them. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. I'd love to interact with you guys. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you would like to interact me, with me on other platforms, there are lots of links down in the description for places to find me on the Instawebs. And uh, yeah, all right guys, I will catch up with you later. Bye.